Thank you. We only have 15 minutes, but the panel should have a lot of information from the synopsis, and we gave a lot of links to our website, which is the main um, pillar of, of this project. The purpose of this project is to improve the experience of students on clinical placement. To do that, there are, there are three pillars. There are shared competences between, from the documents of the, uh, of the professional bodies. Um, there are placement resources on the website in a variety of forms. And then there are also e-portfolios where um, student learning can be recorded and assessed. A full report will, of course, be prepared in January or February of next year. Um, but I'd like to thank uh, the executive group at UCC, Caroline O'Connor, who's here today, Eileen O'Leary, who sent her apologies, Betty Higgs, who's in America presenting, uh, and myself, but also our wonderful uh, partners. Today we have Walter Cullen from UCD, we have Susan Hudson from IT Tralee, we have Sheila Ryder from TCD, um, and Andrew Regan from University of Limerick uh, sends his apologies as well. So I'd like to hand over to Caroline, who will tell you um, the outcomes of the project. Thanks, Henry. I'll take the script. Thank you. <laughs> Henry, thank you very much indeed. So what have we done? We have reviewed each of our profession's competency documents. That's nursing, midwifery and um, nursing, um, medicine and pharmacy. And we have developed a national competency healthcare framework for collaborative practice. The competencies actually are divided into two broad headings, as a professional and as a practitioner. And these shared or common competencies provide an opportunity for students and placement tutors and mentors uh, to identify learning needs before, during, and following placements, following their clinical placements. So we have also created, the second thing we've done is we've created 96 placement resources to date, and there are more being in, in, the, in formulation and we're up and coming. And these very much complement the common com uh, competency framework. Both students and tutors can access these on a website or on an app as well. Now recently, just a few little examples, uh, recently I spoke to one student who's on placement where the internet access is quite difficult to get. Uh, to get. So what she used was her phone and she hotspotted it onto her, one of her, uh, her tablet, onto her tablet, and she was able to access an ePrep resource in relation to uh, patient confidentiality and it was a blog that was there, because that was the particular thing that she was trying to achieve while she was on that placement. That was one of the particular things she was trying to achieve on that placement. And then I was, uh, another student then, on hearing about what we were actually doing, she, I was speaking with her, and she volunteered. She said, you know what, now, I have a journey, and I want to share that journey with healthcare professionals. And I want them to understand what it is, and understand the person experience rather than the patient experience. And she herself had a cancer diagnosis, so she wanted to share that journey with us. So she duly did, so we have made some resources, and we have linked in with, uh, they're linked in with communication and different aspects of um, breaking bad news and different things like that. She, uh, then, that only last week, and a colleague of mine, she was there and she was saying, what am I going to do with students? I want them to understand the empathetic uh, encounter a nurse has with a patient. So she was like, what am I going to do? So I said, you know what, now come on to the ePrep website, and we had a look through, and we found what we needed to find. She actually showed it to the students. She was kind of thinking, ah, we'll see how it goes. She showed it to the students, and she came back, and she said it absolutely worked a treat. She said from the point of view, she got feedback from the students after, uh, saying that they really felt that they understood what it was to en engage in this empathetic relationship with a, per with, with, um, a, pe a person. Then um, another person that I was actually moving along one day and I was out in clinical placement meeting some students again and a uh, uh, CNM manager came up to me, one of the ward managers came up to me and she said, do you know what, I had, I, is there anything at all you can actually do or help me with? And I said, God, whatever we can do, we'll try. So she said, look, I, myself and a first year student, we happened to be in the room when a patient received a cancer diagnosis. And she said, the first year student got a bit of a shock, to say the least. She said, but is there anything at all that we can actually use to help us to demonstrate and to get the, uh, the student to understand anything about breaking bad news? So again, we used one of the resources that was here. And um, we've also got other students involved and engaged very much with us in the design and the actual recording of the many placement resources. 
So we've also, um, on the 22nd of September, we hosted a national uh, e-prep symposium, uh, which we re feel will start breaking the ground for IPL students as well for us within UCC, and hopefully we can be linking with Dempna and finding out from our where we can improve and where we can encourage our staff to get more involved in it, I think, really more than anything else. Um, I think we're probably at, a, a, at, the, at the zero level, the ground zero level at the moment with it, uh, but we, it, it is coming up. The people are remembering it and people are kind of, you know, coming to, sit, coming to terms with it. So the next thing then that we actually did um, was we went along and we developed uh, electronic portfolios in the sense of we chose one. We implemented it and we evaluated it. That was the aim of our project, part of this project, was to choose one and, th and um, implement it and evaluate it. Now here I would like to acknowledge the, the great work that Eileen O'Leary has done. Unfortunately, as Henry said, she isn't able to be with us today, but she uh, was very, very strong in implementing this e-portfolio and working through this for us, uh, for us as a part of the team. So what we did was we engaged with the Learning Technologies Unit and to assess and see, gosh, what our portfolio would actually work for us and what would work best. So from this, we used PebblePad because we felt it actually addressed our needs at that particular point in time. And we piloted PebblePad and we have evaluated that. And we have used that within UCC, TCD, Trulli IT, and um, that's it, isn't it? Yes, I think I have them all at that stage. Within the nursing schools and the pharma pharmacy schools. That's where we've, we've used that. Then what we're actually doing as well is we are, we are preparing students for transition to professional placement. So the e-portfolios, they have given us a platform and they, they've given us a platform so that we can actually encourage students to document evidence to demonstrate achievement of competencies. Uh, that they have actually ach uh, achieved, uh, that, that can be assessed as well by tutors, clinical tutors, and also assessed by academic tutors using a rubric. And Susan was very much instrumental in developing that rubric so that it can give feedback to the students as well. And we're also, the ePortfolio platform as well, um, helps students to reflect, reflect on their practice, reflect in their clinical practice, thereby linking the theory with the practice, so starting to make the connections, which is important. Students then as well incorporated some digital artifacts into their portfolios, such as um, photographs, such as little podcasts, and uh, to show their achievement of their clinical competencies as well. They've also developed a portfolio for future employment. They have also, the portfolios as well, they have created uh, areas for, I suppose, personal development really is the way we could put it, by they're forming action plans, knowing what they want to achieve and setting out their, their, their goals and achieving those, and identifying their learning needs as well within their placements and within their programs overall really. Also as well, it can act as an archive as well for all the materials the that they've learned and uh, they, ha they have logged and they have, store they have uh, created. And as well, the platform as well was, uh, um, and we also have made sure that the, this is designed on the website and also it can be d uh, used as an app as well. So from that, I'd like to show you an example of what the por a portfolio looks like. And this is from one of student, uh, Susan's students, Katie. What she has done here is she has created the, the portfolio with the CV at the beginning, which is the, the to show, and then she has done a philosophical, um, professional philosophical um, definition of nursing for her. She's also identified her, le her learning objectives as well, and she has created an action plan that she's going to work off of um, for, her place, for her placement. She has included reflections and artifacts as well, and they have also been included to demonstrate, in this particular case, she has achieved two competencies, and that's what she has demonstrated through this. So I suppose in summary, what have we achieved and what have we done to date? We have developed the shared competency framework and we are looking for that to be a springboard to get IPL running within our university and our partner universities and colleges. We have also developed uh, placement resources and these are aligned with the shared competencies. We have also implemented and evaluated an e-portfolio platform. We have developed an e-prep website and an app and we have hosted an inaugural conference uh, symposium, I should say, called e-prep symposium as well. 
So next, we're going to look at what has been the impact of all these developments, and my colleagues Henry Smithson and Walter Cullen are going to answer to these questions for us. Um, okay, good afternoon. My name is Walter Cullen from the UCD School of Medicine, and it's been absolutely uh, wonderful to be part of this consortium, and congratulations to Henry and all the people you've met on the work they've done. So I'm going to talk about impact, and we're going to look at impact under three headings, reach and dissemination, teaching and learning, and then the dialogue and discourse, which we have been responsible for creating. So um, the website is now established, and I suppose it's useful just to kind of look at some of the metrics relating to that. Um, here I have to check the up-to-date kind of metrics because they're increasing so rapidly. So the website data and analytics, they've been available since the beginning of October. And they showed that in the first week, there were 1,703 page views by 197 users, which is quite considerable. Um, the project has presented to nine different conferences in Ireland, the UK and the United States. Um, as Henry mentioned at the outset, our colleague Betty Higgs can't be here today as she's presenting in Los Angeles her work on the ePrep project. Um, conferences have, conference presentations have focused on a number of topics, which include ePortfolios, interprofessional learning and digital resources, and indeed we look forward to kind of working with colleagues who are also working in those areas that have had work funded through this particular program. Um, circulation of the shared competencies and links to resources. Um, have been circulated to the statutory and training bodies um, to ensure sustainability of the project by raising the profile of the platform to these respective professional bodies. So the educational director of the NMBI um, has been following the project since its establishment and the e-portfolio work has very much informed the strategy of APEL, which is the affiliation of pharmacy practice experiential learning. And our colleagues in medicine have also been received have also received the information on the shared competency document and on the on the um, evolving placement resources which we have developed um, but perhaps from my perspective and I think from our collective perspective the greatest impact thus far has been the national conference um, which was held at UCC on future professional practice a step in the right direction um, we had 370 participants at this meeting both um, on the on on site and also um, watching it virtually uh, by remote streaming, uh, we had a number of international speakers and advisors who attended and presented on their work, in particular relating to the uh, work of ePrep. Um, so I guess out of this, uh, we feel that there is an appetite for regular ePrep events such as this, um, and. As an example of one, uh, Professor Smithson will be attending um, a clinical tutor annual meeting which we are hosting in UCD um, in this academic year to talk about the work of ePrep and to perhaps socialise its outputs so that our colleagues in UCD School of Medicine can perhaps engage um, even greater than they have been with us. So, let me pass on to Henry then. Teaching and learning, another important uh, impact of this project is, of course, that it must inform and change and develop teaching and learning. Um, we're doing that through clinical placements. You've heard how we're doing it. From a baseline where e-portfolios were rarely, if ever, used two years ago, uh, currently, through e-prep, nearly 800 students are now using e-portfolios, either informally, <coughs> discretionary, or, man or mandated in the curriculum. There was a, a very firm questioning from the panel last time about why there was no engagement with medicine. And I said that we were trying very hard to influence uh, strategists and the curriculum committee in medicine. Um, we were successful because in one of the streaming lecture theatres we got 130 medical students listening to the morning presentations of ePrep and we have now had requests from some medical students for discretionary uh, ePortfolio uh, e licences. This is the first step which will, then the results and the, the satisfaction will be taken back to the curriculum committee. It's going to take another year or two but I'm quite confident that this is going to extend just as well as it's extended uh, in other disciplines. 
To enhance the impact, information and links are being circulated to clinical tutors and other institutions. There aren't very many other institutions because we've had such wonderful collaboration from almost all the institutions in the country, um, mainly in, the, in Ireland but also in the UK. And I've, I've also had a conversation when I was at a conference in Washington with somebody who teaches at a medical school in Virginia who wants to work with us and wants to develop some of the um, resources that we're doing. Um, equally, um, EPREP is supported by the Vice President of Teaching and Learning at UCC, and we are in discussions about how to broaden uh, the reach of, of the project. Um, Supportive and collaborative conversations with our partners continue. I can't see that this will stop in two months' time. So we anticipate as well that IPL, and as Dibn has pointed out, IPL is a very difficult thing to embed in, in undergraduate curricula. Um, but we're hoping that this is another facilitatory um, tool that can do this. So I suppose maybe our key message is that we're not done yet. Um, so over the next three months, EPREP, with the help of our partners and students, will continue to populate and champion the placement resources on the website, um, showcase the platform to new disciplines and subject areas um, in, a, in a very proactive manner. Um, ePortfolio is certainly a dynamic and fluid platform, and in the course of the project we've encountered different revisions and a new platform is currently being evaluated in IT Tralee. Um, EPREP has been invited to share their experience with schools in the UK and will share it initially to the UCC community as a tell talk and also Professor Smithson will be visiting us in UCD to talk about the, the, the project and its potential kind of resonance for our future work in our curriculum. So certainly we know that IPL at a professional level rarely happens um, and it's great to see so many people starting to look at this particular topic. Um, but as our national symposium I think showed, uh, the student community are actually very engaged with this topic and are keen to uh, learn more about it and in particular to learn about how they can how can they can better do it when they're when they become practitioners and uh, i guess that's really the the major uh, driver for 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 um eprep and epreps um, aims and objectives in the future the sustainability of the project will be delivered lastly by susan hudson thanks <coughs> I'm here to outline the methods uh, to sustain the project uh, moving forward, and these will be centred on its three pillars. Sustaining the profile and use of the interprofessional competency framework will be achieved by <coughs> raising its profile with professional regulatory bodies and other institutions. And I suppose this has been most recently evidenced by the Nursing Midwifery Board's engagement with an interest in the project. Sustaining the use of an e-portfolio platform will be realised by the collaborating institutions who have integrated e-portfolio development in their current curricula and in one case have embedded it into its new curricula. Uh, I teach Lee have adopted an e-portfolio as its assessment strategy for years three and four practice placements in nursing and have embedded it in all four years of its new undergraduate nursing curricula due to be rolled out in 2018. Trinity College Dublin and UCC have also integrated e-portfolios into their pharmacy curricula and as Henry's indicated, the Vice President of Teaching and Learning at UCC is very keen that the reach of e-prep broadens across the institution with a call for wider interprofessional conversations to include dentistry, therapies and social work. Integration to curricula and a strong commitment from all uh, collaborating institutions to the continued use and indeed development of the e-prep pl platform ensures, in our view, the project's sustainability. And finally, sustaining the use and further development of clinical practice placement resources. Um, by virtue of their use of an e-portfolio platform, collaborating institutions will sustain the use and further development of the resources. The website, which currently contains 96 resources from five institutions, provides, in our view, the medium for sustainability, facilitating students and tutors on-site engagement with a wide range of user guides, tools and learning objectives. We are also encouraging our students to champion the ePREP website to their peers. And to supplement this, we are currently contacting community-based tutors in medicine and nursing to highlight the ways that the resources can enhance a student's clinical learning experience. 
As a result of positive feedback from the National EPREP Symposium held at UCC last month, there have been already requests for annual EPREP events and workshops. We have no doubt that such events will expose the project to an interprofessional audience from other institutions, impacting positively on the project's sustainability in the long term. Um, I'd just like to thank the Forum on behalf of the partners for the opportunity we've had to create uh, the resources and the EPREP platform. And thank you very much for your attention.